everybody, Nate Lynn here from Ecom Legends and Ecom Empires, and I've got another origin story for you. Uh, Tyler and Peter Day, I've been uh, affiliates for many, many years and have a really fascinating story, so we're going to jump into their backstory, find out a little bit more about what, uh, what got them and what motivated them to become e-commerce or uh, online entrepreneurs, and then see what kind of frustrations and challenges they dealt with in the early days, um, knowing that most of the folks in uh, Ecom empires and uh, that are getting started in their own entrepreneurial journeys are just that they're getting started so uh, This whole series of videos is going to highlight some people who have a dramatic amount of expertise and then what they dealt with in the beginning so Welcome guys. Yeah, Nate. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks. for having us on. Yeah, absolutely So I, I'm really curious and I'm sure we've talked about this before at Ecom legends events and and I remember the first dinner that we had together uh, a couple, you know, a year and a half or so ago, uh, you were telling me a little bit about your backstory. But you know, for the for the crowd, like, what's what's your backstory? Like, where, like, how did you guys get into doing what you're doing now? And what specifically, what were you doing, bef you know, before this? And then let's talk about the transition, the segue in. Yeah. So really, the whole journey um, actually starts with Peter. So I'll, I'll let Peter kind of begin begin the journey here. Yeah. So when I was um, 19 years old, I was. Um, just bouncing around different um, kind of career paths. I had gone to a music school. I had gone to a community college. I ended up going to UConn. I was kind of all over the place for just what I was going to do with my life. And just during this period of time, I was living at home with my parents. I was basically just like in the parents' basement kind of thing. And I stumbled across some YouTube videos and I was on YouTube and there was these guys who were just making like millions of dollars on YouTube. People like Neil Patel and Pat Flynn and just these different people in the industry. And um, it was just really fascinating to me, especially because a lot of these YouTube internet marketing people were super young. I was young. I was 19 and um, just watching these YouTubes and there's young guys like 25 years old. They're just making millions online. And I was like, you know what? Um, this just seems like a really interesting thing to explore. Um, so I bought my first info product. I, I bought, um, I actually bought one of those ClickBank products. So I was probably the person on the other end buying one of those really kind of scammy. I think the product was called like the rich 16 year old or something, right? It was like, <laughs> <laughs> it was the rich, the, my first ever info product was the rich 16 year old system. And it cost like 50 bucks and it was a ClickBank product. And I bought it like I was a consumer on the other end. And um, I went through the product and it was basically just a product that taught you how to do Google um, pay-per-click essentially. And um, it was my first introduction to the industry. And after that, I started consuming uh, more products. I think that we, we just, we needed to learn the stuff. So we just started buying more and more info products and courses and just um, every year we just bought training so you were, and you were consuming a bunch of information right yeah just yeah and i was spending all night on youtube just trying to get free information on youtube and i was attending webinars whenever someone had a webinar i would learn and uh, we what, what were you hoping to accomplish like what was the what was that entrepreneurial spirit like going to solve for you um in like a psychological way or yeah, just, just like, in, like in 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 life in general like what like why why were you doing this instead of like just following the path of college job etc you know what i think it's just the way that maybe tyler and i have been wired or something because i just like couldn't picture myself working for um someone else i i just couldn't i just couldn't fathom the idea of just like graduating from high school or college and actually be stuck um behind a desk working for someone else having for some reason it just what i was so against that and that's why i was trying different things like that's actually why i was into music so i was a big guitar player mm -hmm. and i thought guitar was going to be kind of my way to like do something for myself, not to have a boss. Like for some reason I was always just really against the whole like nine to five rat race thing. And I was just pursuing guitar. And I was like, you know what, this internet thing at least seems like more economically viable than the guitar. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> go figure. That's cool. Um, so what, what was your, your first goal? Like, what did you, what, what were you trying to get to in terms of like, um, you know, 
your income? Like what, what was, when you go back, you know, I know you guys have been uber successful since then, but like, what was that first measuring stick? What did you want to try to get to in the beginning? Yeah. So I think like I linked up with Peter kind of like shortly, like maybe like a year into him kind of like learning about what affiliate marketing was. So after Peter like bought that course, he just started to kind of play around with like the concepts in the course. And about a year later, I think Peter was making like four to six K a month in profit. So he was actually like fully supporting himself at that time. And um, I'm like a couple of years younger than Peter. So at that time I was like about 17 years old, um, just like finishing up high school. And I saw Peter now like making this full-time income doing affiliate marketing. Um, and I, I was just kind of blown away. So I think at my, at the time, like Peter really just wanted to make enough money to support himself and just have a little bit more money on top of that. So maybe at the time, like our goal was between, you know, making like 5k a month um, mm -hmm. each. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, my goal was I wanted to go into college, but um, I, I didn't want to be like financially dependent on my parents and stuff. So my first goal was just be to become financially independent. Um, and you know, it didn't happen immediately for me. Like when we started doing affiliate marketing, I mean, you know, there'd be months where we wouldn't make any money. There'd be months when we lo would lose money. So, you know, it would take us, um, you know, we didn't realize at the time, but it would actually take us years to be able to, um, stably support ourselves financially and stuff like that. But really, I mean, that was just our initial goal. So yeah, we, probably, we probably struggled. We probably did struggle for like a solid three years, mm -hmm. like sometimes making money other times, like not making a dime. And then there was multiple times where we just lost every dollar we ever earned because we just weren't profitable for like six months in a row. And it, it took us at least six years or sorry, it took at least like three years of struggle to finally figure out enough stuff where we then had like a ever profiting business, like ever since. So, yeah. And so take me back to, you know, so Tyler, you're 17. Peter, how old were you? I was 19 and Tyler was around 17. Okay. Um, and so goal number one for Tyler, at least was being independent. Were you, were you still living with your folks at the time? Yeah. So I was 17. Um, I was like just graduating college. Um, high school at 17. Yeah. That's, that's what I meant. High school. Um, you know, I was going into college and yeah, I mean, my parents were still supporting me. Um, like I had some help just like, you know, going into college, just, you know, being able to, to have my mom send me like $300 a month for food and just like basic stuff like that. But honestly, like I just like, I hated having to, having my parents send me money. I just like every time I would like completely run out of money and I would have to ask my mom to send me just like money for groceries and stuff. Like I would just, I would just feel, um, bad about it. Like I just felt like, um, I just wasn't doing enough on my end to be able to support my basic needs. So, um, it you know, like you were a burden. Yeah, exactly. Like my, my parents, like they've had their own financial struggles and like, I knew even like the $300 a month was a burden on my, on my parents. Like, and they had to, um, you know, pay for, for housing and like the dorms and stuff. So like, yeah, I just really wanted to figure out like my own income as soon as possible. And, and I really just started hustling hard. So, you know, Peter and I, we started to have some success early on just running um, search traffic to affiliate offers. So like Peter said, that initial info product was kind of teaching about how to run ads on the search engines. And, you know, we kind of took that training and ran with it. And we started to promote stuff on the search engines as affiliates. And started to kind of learn about just other channels of driving traffic. So I think I started some blog that isn't around now, but it was um, basically just like a, you know, I was trying to do SEO and stuff like that, but I would basically just go to school. I was a full-time student and then I would sit in my dorm room for like six hours a day and just hammer out blog posts or, you know, work on my paid ads and, and just do whatever <laughs> I possibly could to like get results, you know? If you had to remember like that first initial just ass kicking frustration challenge problem what what was that when you guys first got started i think probably it never lack, having it yeah. was lack of results so like for the first like couple years like i was working on doing all this paid traffic stuff that was getting some traction but i was spending most of my time trying to do seo 
And I think I had wrote, I think I had personally written about 350 <laughs> blog posts oh. in the first, in the first <laughs> year of doing SEO, thinking that like something was going to take off. And I just, I was just getting zero traction. Like I think in that first year of doing SEO, I had made under like $500 in, in, in revenue from it. And like, it was just like, I'd just beaten myself into the ground, like six hours a day as a full, you know, on top of being a full-time student, just like writing these damn blogs. And like, I was just like, you know what, something's got to give here. Like we got to change something after that. And like, you know, we just started getting really frustrated. You know? <laughs> so, so we, so we laugh at, at it now. Right. But how did that feel at the time? Like, what was that frustration like for you? Um, I think it was just that, like, it was just frustration. Like, you know, the money, the money wasn't there. Like every month I would have like a tiny amount of money that I could spend to just like feed myself. And, um, I think I understood though, like in the back of my mind that it was a longer process because just from watching training of like other people tell their stories in the industry, I realized that it was a common theme where people had struggled for like two, three years before they had gotten any traction. So while I was kind of beating my head against the wall, I think I also understood that this is a long-term industry and that nothing was going to happen for me overnight. So, you know, especially having Peter there with me too. I mean, we had had some up and down success, so it's not like there were zero results coming in. Like there were some months where we would do like a couple thousand in profit and we would get amped up about that. But then, you know, the next month it might be zero and, we, you know, but at least those small wins kept us kind of going in the early stages, you know? So Peter, what's your take on that? Like what, what was that frustration like for you in those early days? Um, it was frustrating, but we didn't have much pressure because so when Tyler and I were in college working out this whole affiliate marketing thing, um, our parents were still paying for our tuition and our dorm room. So like, even though there was a lot of failure, we at least weren't like very stressed out because we didn't have like, we didn't even have to pay our own rent. We didn't have to, we had almost zero expenses. So it was actually a really fortunate opportunity for us where we were able to go to college for four years or so our parents were paying for the dorm, the parents were paying tuition, and we just basically got to work on this affiliate stuff almost um, like stress-free and, and stuff. I think it would be so much, it would have been so much more stressful for us if we were failing that much and still actually having to like support a family or like pay rent or make a living. So, um, but my main motivation was um, I guess similar to Tyler's, but um, I had, I did have a little bit more pressure on myself because my, um, my parents were really like the, uh, almost like the poor dad. So in high school, I read Robert Kiyosaki's Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Yep. And I just realized that my parents pretty much were like the poor dad. I mean, they told me to go to university and get a mm -hmm. job. And, um, and thankfully I, I really immersed myself into some of that personal development. I was listening to, um, Robert Kiyosaki, Jim Rohn, Brian Tracy, um, Tony Robbins stuff. I was just really like um, uh -huh. immersing, my, uh, <clears throat> immersing myself in this personal development. And I realized, you know what? Um, I just, I said, wow, like that rich dad, poor dad. It's like my parents have been practically the definition of the poor dad. Um, so my parents basically told me like, you're going to graduate from college. You're going to find a good job. And you're gonna you're gonna work the job and they said by the way like we don't want like any laziness in this household and when you graduate from college they said when you graduate from college you're also not going to be one of those kids that just like lives with their parents so i was like crap like i'm gonna graduate this college in three years and my parents won't let me back they want me to just get a job the job is the last thing that i want so i'm like what am i gonna do so that was my primary motivation that's why i hustled so hard in learning internet marketing was to just be able to graduate in like three years from college and not have to get a job and there was not an option to, to live with the parents so i'm like it's either i'm gonna make this work or i'm gonna just be like forced to just like get some kind of job somewhere okay um, Got it. So, yeah. so what, like, what was the tipping point for you guys? What was that epiphany or the, you know, the, the thing that worked, like what, what yeah. put, put it over the edge? So it was around like 2015. So remember we started 2012 really, and it'd been like three years of like beating our head against the wall. And in 2015, we just sort of started to get tuned into like the right, 
um, training basically. So we started to meet some other affiliates who were having success and who were really um, generous with their knowledge. So, you know, we started to meet other affiliates that were having success doing lead generation. And up to that point, we had made all of our focus just promoting info products. And, you know, the info thing for us just like wasn't taking off. Like it, it just wasn't working. So the epiphany for us was kind of switching focus from promoting info products to just focusing on lead generation. So we got connected with this guy. I'm not going to mention his name right now just because I'm not sure he wants me to, but you know, he basically showed us some things that were really working with him in like the white hat lead gen space, um, generating like mortgage leads and stuff like that. So, um, you know, we sort of like were able to <clears throat> look at the information that he was sharing with us um, that was pretty similar to what we were doing. Like he was marketing stuff on the search engines too. So basically instead of like promoting info products, we basically switched our approach to doing lead gen and like right off the bat, the results were just so much better. Um, so I think it was like within like a month or two of switching over to lead generation that we actually did our first 10K month in profit, which was just like incredible for us at the time. Like we'd only been used to making at most like five, 6K in profit, like on our very best months. And that might have only happened like a couple times in the past three years. Um, but for us to take this information, this, this knowledge, which is essentially like still what we're doing now, like the, the knowledge was just about um, promoting lead generation offers, like building your own email list and, you know, making money on the front end with ads, generating leads, and then also building email lists and monetizing those. So yeah, I mean, it took off pretty quickly. Like we had a 10K profit month. Um, a couple months later, I think we got up to like 20, 30K. And, um, you know, it wasn't long, too long after that that we started to hit some bigger numbers, um, eventually getting into six-figure profit months and stuff. Okay. Um, so, so the guy that you met, like that, that, that connection changed it all for you, right? It, cha it changed everything for us. It just opened our eyes to like the rest of the industry. So it felt I'm, like I'm nailing that point home because so many people's success comes from who they meet at an event. And obviously I think that there's no better event than Econ Legends, but uh, yeah. like the, that thing is so critical to people. I've seen this now over and over and over again in people's origin stories. It's like there's a connection that they make with somebody. Exactly. Yeah. So usually it comes down to like a pivotal mentor or like somebody who is just um, willing to share some information and and that's exactly what happened for us. And it was just really an epiphany. So I think up to that point, like our knowledge was so limited that we didn't even realize that we could be doing affiliate marketing in all of these different industries. Like we didn't really understand that lead generation was out there, you know, and available for affiliate marketers. We had our blinders on thinking that, yeah, the entire affiliate marketing industry is just like promoting kind of like info products and stuff. Like we just didn't even know, right? So it, it was just eye opening for us. And then once we were able to get profitable, we just started to, um, to leverage as much of like credit cards as we possibly could. And, you know, we saw the money coming in. So we were kind of getting confident in like our uh, media buying skills. And we just started to really scale as hard as we could at that point, just reinvesting everything we could into generating more traffic and scaling up from there. And I think our first year that we sort of hit it in like 2015, we actually ended up doing like 3 million in revenue or something. So um, yeah, it was pretty significant. Like Peter and I each made six figures in profit that year and, and it just really kicked things off for us. What would you say is like that first big conflict you had after? So you've got, you, 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 you know, kind of found a mentor, someone that, could, that helped kind of show the way you guys developed a plan, started working into the lead gen. Yeah. Uh, as opposed to what, you know, the path that you had taken before, what was like some of the, like one of the big first conflicts or like something that just like, you know, you know, just knock you guys in the proverbial mouth, so to speak. So I us, think, yeah, down. the biggest yeah. one was like the lead buyer, like the guy had introduced us to one of his lead buyers in the mortgage space, which was huge, but the lead buyer, like his business just shut down for some reason. Like it wasn't, didn't have anything to do with us, but like he just wasn't buying any more leads. So at that point, like we had to figure out something else because, you know, we had learned how to do like this one specific campaign selling leads, to, like this one specific person in this one specific vertical, but we had no idea how to do anything else yet. Mm -hmm. So 
when that shut down, like the entire business just went on pause. Cause that was the person basically paying you. You were, you were doing leads and driving yeah. them to that, that individual's that call center. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then when, when they were, you know, then all of a sudden you're like, well, I can still generate leads, but I can't get any money for them because my. You needed person- to find like a new vertical. It was almost like just starting over again, essentially. Like, um, yeah, but we started over with like a much higher level of knowledge. And, um, you know, I think, I think we only, it was only really like a 60 day period or so where we had no money coming in before we figured out just like a different offer to plug in or something like that. Why didn't you throw in the towel? Why didn't you quit? Oh, we had tasted the success. I mean, at this point, I think we had had like a $200,000 month of like profit. I mean, we had some like very significant wins. So, um, yeah, yeah we, were was, so, we were so amped up at that point that there was just no like going back. back. Like that we just knew that this was going to work one way. And it's just, what, what is the alternative? Like do something else or like get a job that's only going to pay like seven grand a month when we just had like a $200,000 month. It's like we, we had tasted the, um, the, what do you want to call it? Upside of this industry. Yeah. The sacred um, fruit. Yeah. Got it. So, so, you, so you guys had to, you had to kind of re, reboot. Like, what, what, what was that like? It was just a lot of testing, really. So, like, we had made some good prof, profits. So now, fortunately, we had a good testing budget. So, we had to start to kind of use the the knowledge that he shared with us, like how to build a landing page, how to build an email list, and we just started applying that same knowledge to just other verticals. So. We figured out, you know, how to get on different affiliate networks. We started to get our eyes open to just all these different lead generation verticals that you could even do. And then we just started to allocate testing budget to just figuring out um, different things that would work. And it was around this time, too, that we also started to advertise on Facebook. So, like, up to that point, we had only been doing the search engines for our traffic. But it was around this time, too, that we figured out Facebook, which is really huge for us. So you know, we started just testing some different campaigns on Facebook. And back in 2015, it just wasn't very hard to get things profitable on Facebook. Um, It was just the the ad platform, there was like really not a lot of restrictions. Like, I don't even know if they're really like reviewing ads. Like you would just put something up, it would like immediately go live in like 20 or 30 minutes. And like more often than not, things just kind of worked just Mm -hmm. because we were getting clicks on Facebook for like five, 10, 15 cents and driving them to offers that were getting like $1 plus EPCs and stuff, which it just didn't make it very hard to work. So that was sort of like our next big boom in business was figuring out the whole um, Facebook side of things. Was there any aftermath that you faced with, uh, with that? Anything, um, anything how so? That, anything that came like, so you've got this, uh, this initial, no, I don't want to say initial success. So you've, you've got this period of grinding, you know, for a yeah. couple of years, then, then you get some success, you reboot and then some new success. Was there any, any aftermath to like this building momentum? Have you guys just, you know, looking back and just kind of commenting on it anecdotally now, anything that, that, you know, any, any lessons or, or thoughts that you learned through that process that maybe now you don't, uh, you, you don't, you don't do, or you would do different. Well, I think it's been such, it's really hard to like look back on it and have regrets because we do need to understand that. I mean, if you're brand new in the industry, there's a learning curve. Like you need to learn, you Mm -hmm. need to, you need to learn like how to run traffic. You need to learn how to just, there's just a lot to learn. And like for us to be beating ourselves up because we didn't kind of like have all of that expertise, like in the first or second year. I mean, I think we were just kind of doing the best that we could. Um, I think if it were to happen again, we would be able to recover much quicker now because Mm -hmm. we have more skills. Um, uh, So, I mean, I I guess one, one thing that we could say is a learning lesson is that we needed more of a team because in order to have diversity, you probably are going to need a team because if you're an affiliate marketer or even an e-com, um, affiliate or whatever. Yeah. Um, if you really want to be running like 10 verticals at the same time and you want to have a diverse business, it's really, really difficult to actually do that simply just yourself. Like right now, Tyler and I are probably running like 20, 30 different offers, different offers on Facebook. And it's like, it, it would be 
I, I, in my opinion, I think, I think it would be virtually impossible without a team. Like yeah. Howard, Tyler, and I are supposed to run 30 different verticals or something on Facebook with just like zero team. I, I think an individual can only do so much. So an individual can probably run like three to five ad campaigns or something like very effectively. But um, if we were to do it all over again, I would have started forming a team like pretty early on, even if the team was commission only, I would have, I would have at least got some buddies and be like, Hey, like, why don't you join my team? I'll just give you like half the profits. I would have tried to get something going, even if it wasn't even a salary, even if I was just like enlisting some, members on commission only because it just we wouldn't have had the ups and downs like we were putting all of our eggs in one basket i guess was the big learning lesson because remember tyler said we were just selling leads to um the mortgage buyer and it's if we had been doing mortgage and car insurance and education and all of these credit card verticals and different things um it, maybe some stuff would have still got shut down, but it would have at least prevented us from going to zero income for like a season of, of time. Now, now you, you guys mentioned some, uh, some work on personal development. What, looking back, how have you guys transformed as individuals? Um, I would say a lot, man. I mean, I think like what's changed obviously is just like our level of knowledge. Um, <sighs> Yeah. I mean, I, I just like a lot changed for us. So like we've grown in every area, like we've grown in skill in our own business. Um, our entire network has grown and, and you've been a very big help um, for helping us grow our network through your events and, and just who you've introduced us to. Um, but yeah, I think, I, I think it was like a, a change for me when like I realized a handful of years ago that like, me as a person, I was just like really behind as far as like my level of skill and my level of knowledge and just like how much I could actually handle. Like when I first got started, I would be running like one ad campaign and I would be like fully burnt out, you know, mm -hmm. and like that was all I was managing was like one campaign. And like, I was like, that was it. That was my, my limit, you know? But I think like as you progress in business and as you kind of add more to your plate, over time and expand um, sort of like your capacity for how much you can manage without getting stressed out can also like increase over time too. So I think it's almost like a muscle, you know, it's like when you first start working out, like you might not even be able to do like a 20 pound like bicep curl, but you know, after you've been working out for years, like, yeah, you can go on a, you can go on a 30 minute run, then you can bench press and you can do another thing and then you can, do legs, you know, it's like, you can kind of like slowly add things onto the plate without becoming like too overwhelmed and too stressed. Um, so that's been like the biggest change over the years. And, you know, it's, it's really important to, um, to kind of train yourself to do that, to be able to manage more and, um, you know, grow in that way. How about you, Peter? What, what sort of transformation have you seen in yourself and in, in your thinking, your surroundings, you know, um, anywhere you care to take it? So the more we get exposed to people that are higher um, level than us, it's been helping us grow. And that's one of the reasons why we joined um, the Legends Mastermind for the last, uh, we've attended the Legends almost like a year or over mm -hmm. a year now, because it's like, Honestly, like Tyler and I have had success, but there's some people in the room at Legends that have had more success than us. And um, just being around those type of people help us to think uh, bigger. Like when we talk to someone who has a net worth of like $700 million or something, it's just like a whole different ballpark than some of the affiliate marketers that we've been surrounding ourselves with that maybe have a net worth of like $1 million or like 800 grand or something. It's just like... it our mindset is getting um, taken to the next level, definitely by just immersing ourselves with just people that have had a ton more success than we have. And then um, it's almost like Jim, Jim Rohn said, like birds of a feather flock together. Mm -hmm. It's like, if you can be hanging out with these people that are running these like hundred million dollar businesses and stuff, um, eventually you're going to start thinking like them. You're going to start like acting like them in certain ways. And it's just been, um, just very helpful to our business being surrounded and immersed in, in masterminds and, and just people that are more successful than we are. 
Well, that's a perfect segue. Gentlemen, we're coming towards the end of our time. Any of you that are watching live, or if you're watching this broadcast, if you want to meet Tyler or Peter, you're welcome to join us at Fort Worth. Uh, our November event is the 14th and 15th. And um, just like Peter said, Jim Rohn said it best as well, you are the average of the five people that you hang out the most with. And if your average is uh, employees or blue collar workers or whomever that might be, then more than likely that's going to be what you also live up to as well. So finding yourself in a situation or in a room with other uh, masters at their craft, people who check their egos at the door. Uh, I like to say that, um, you know, we've got a really good group of people that come to the event. And just as Peter was seeing, you know, folks with more than a hundred million dollars worth of gross revenue, but Sometimes you wouldn't even know it until you're having dinner with them. And um, when they make that, you know, maybe make a little mention of it or talk about the size of the team that maybe they've, they've downsized, uh, that sort of stuff. So uh, thank you very much, Tyler and Peter. This is going to wrap up our origin story for you guys. And looking forward to seeing you guys not too long from now. Thank yeah. you. Thanks, awesome. everybody. Um, Talk soon. Hey, just one thing. Um, if you want to hang